Hello everyone, welcome to the first video of Steven Inks. That's right, I've decided to change the name of this channel, uh, but not the content. We are still talking about fountain pens and fountain pen related subjects from an artist perspective. Um, but I'm going to go a little more into the rationale of why I decided to change the name of my channel later on in the video, because up top we've got uh, a pen that we're going to be looking at and I want to show it to you right now. It is the Wingsung 3008 Piston Filler. Um, this was generously given to me by David, a longtime viewer of the channel, who I've enjoyed having conversations in the comment sections of my videos for quite some time. Um, and this, along with some other pens that he sent me, were uh, pens that he no longer wanted in his collection. So um, that addition to my collection, we are going to be looking at this pen today, some of those other pens down the line. And um, I, I, I would say that this 3008 is um, known not so much for its uniqueness, but for its similarities to a certain other beloved fountain pen. Um, and we're going to look at the comparisons there. We're also going to look at the parts of this pen. Um, we're going to do a drawing sample. You're going to see some art made with it. And I'm going to come back with some of my opinions on what do I think of this pen? Do I recommend it? Um, is it worth having this and the certain other pen that it looks like? Well, that's all we're going to do today. So um, let's check it out. Let's get started right now. I'm going to go over the parts of this uh, Wingsung 3008. But before I do that, I thought I'd take a second to look at and answer a question that you may have, and I definitely had the first time I laid eyes on this pen, which is um, on a scale of one to Twisby, how much of this is a knockoff of the Twisby Eco? Um, I'm making, of course, the assumption that this design existed before this design. I could be wrong, but it's just kind of um, my assumption, and I don't really know where to find that information. But yeah, it does look a lot like a Twisby Eco, and uh, I want to go over the similarities and the differences between these two designs, because I think there is a reason why you may prefer the 3008 over the Twisby Eco um, and vice versa. But the similarities, first of all, it definitely feels like the same kind of plastic. There's two seams on the sides of this 3008, and there are also, although a bit more faint, there are two seams on the side of this plastic. We've got some injection molded plastic here, um, but they both kind of feel like high quality plastic. So that's a, a, a positive note. When you uncap the Eco, you see there's these ridges on the inside. That's where the um, piston actually stops and it leads into a feed. And when you uncap this 3008, you find very similar design here, slightly shorter uh, rubber O-ring and around to the center. So some differences, um, this section is rounded while this section is molded slightly, got a slightly triangular grip, but round throughout most of the section. Um, one of the main differences that I noticed about this versus the Eco, besides the sort of rounded, overall rounded design of the 3008, as opposed to the sort of hexagonal um, blind cap and cap of the Eco, I rather like this hexagonal shape, but if you're not into it, the 3008 is rounded and a little more traditional looking in that sense. Um, the blind cap here has a little section that you pop out, makes a little popping noise for when you depress the uh, plunger for the, um, the piston. And when you get it to line up with this edge, you push it back in. That way, no matter how you turn this, it can't possibly um, affect the movement of the piston while you're using the pen. So if you, you know, change the angle on the pen a lot, that could be very useful. And it's a nice little safety measure. And it's got these little grooves, um, this little grooved section on the front and the back. So every 180 degrees, 
you have that and it, it feels pretty solid. So that's one thing. Um, I will say this for the design of the pen overall, I don't get the gold and blue. If someone could explain to me, if you really like this color scheme, please let me know, leave me a comment because this looks like the biggest clash to me. I don't understand why this little section right here isn't black or translucent or even gold just to match with the color scheme. That, that bothers me a little bit. Um, but let's let's look at the other parts of the pen. We do have around the edge of the cap, it says 3008, name of the uh, model. And I'm assuming that in Chinese is Wing Sung. I don't speak Chinese at all, so you'd have to consult an expert. Finial doesn't have any stamping or logos on it. Metal cap, slightly springy, pretty stiff. Um, I imagine it would clip. I don't really clip my pens onto anything. Um, but yeah, and then this sort of, uh, this is a plastic ring, this gold colored, uh, it's a little, it's a little cheesy looking, but it, it does work. Um, uncapping the pen, we got, I could unscrew that with a single motion. There's a screw, speaking of screws, there's a screw down in the bottom. I don't know if the focus will get it. So I'm assuming that's what holds the cap on. Looks a little funny, but it's there. Um, section is translucent. One of the things you'll notice about a translucent section is it picks up particles of ink really easily. So, you know, though this pen has been cleaned, it does have uh, some of that residue on there and it's never gonna come off. So be aware of that. That does not bother me at all, but just so you know. And here's the um, nib, it's a fine, which I'm assuming will be a Western fine because the Chinese uh, pens that I've all had sort of mimic that Western aesthetic as opposed to the Japanese fines and extra fines. Um, and here's the body, as I've mentioned before, you pull out this section on the blind cap in order to engage the piston. And when you are done, you just line it up and then put it back in. Um, one thing that's cool about the fact that you can do that is that you can actually put the piston down halfway when your ink level's lower. I know some people like to do that with piston pens. Personally, I don't see the point, but um, there it is. So these are the parts of the pen. I'm going to fill this up with ink and we're going to make some art. For our ink sample today, I thought I'd use something I haven't used in a while, and that's gonna be my uh, Diamine Sherwood Green. And it's um, one of the more budget options of inks that I've owned. Um, a bottle this size of another, uh, another brand, well, a slightly larger bottle of a brand that I really like, like Three Oysters or Colorverse. Um, can run up to $20. Um, noodlers, even though they do make in bigger bottles, about 15 or so. This one cost me about $7.50, I think, like $8. And the level of this ink is quite low, though I don't use it often. Funny story about that. Uh, actually, I was demonstrating a scientific process to my students, um, convection currents, and I was using ink inside a giant aquarium uh, and I spilled this bottle of ink all over the table. We're doing distance learning, learning from home because of the COVID pandemic. And I remember one of my students saying, uh, oh, teacher, your wife is going to kill you. And I thought to myself, how does this kid know exactly what I'm thinking? Anyway, uh, so this is Diamine Sherwood Green. Now, what I like to do with piston fillers is I like to first put the piston all the way down to the bottom of the pen so that way we don't have any bubbles coming up and then I'm going to insert into the ink Ooh, just barely too small is that gonna work it's not okay there's a disadvantage but I blame the bottle um, let's do something a little bit different then uh, I'm gonna get a blunt needle syringe. This is something that you can do when you have um, 
a low level of ink and I'm taking the section off. After taking this cap off, I'm going to put this ink in, pull a little ink out, just like I'm prepping for surgery. And then I'm gonna place the end of the needle into the syringe. But before I do that, open up this section here. And then I'm just going to depress the needle and fill it up. Got a little extra in here, gonna put it back into the bottle. All right, so there's a no mess way. If you ever um, have a pen that doesn't fit into the bottle and it seems like an issue that I'm having from time to time, smaller bottles, unique designs, all that sort of thing, uh, you can uh, get a blunt needle syringe for really cheap online, usually a couple of dollars. Um, and that is one way to do it. There we go ink on my hands as usual. Um, cool, let's play with this pen. Before we get into the main drawing event, a couple of uh, test strokes to see what kind of lines we get with this pen. Um, having played around with it a little bit before shooting this, I do notice that it's a bit, it's a little bit scratchy. You can see you get these lines that are more of a Western fine, but not bad at all. This is Tomoe River paper, by the way. Um, I get a little bit of skipping sometimes and sometimes not. I also find if I disengage um, this blind cap here, I get a little bit of a juicier flow. So these are the kind of lines I get here. Um, I think this is just about perfect. I do love those extra fines that you get, you know, um, from like the Pilot or the Platinum pens, but something about the thickness of this, um, of this line gives you some of the fun things about fountain pens, which is like the shading and sort of that, that um, wet look when the inks go down. I don't know, I think that's pretty cool. Um, do a couple of shapes. Here I am shading a circle. This is with the blind cap disengage. I am still getting a little bit of skippiness. But like I said, the nib, you can kind of see at the bottom here, it's a little bit lighter than the top. Just a little bit of that shading. Pretty fun. Um, so that's the that's a circle. From an educational program, you can see I'm helping you with your shapes. This is a circle. This is a pyramid. It's very good. I feel a little bad because I always mark that my videos are not for children, but here I am teaching you shapes. Um, here we go. A little bit of hatching here. Nice thing about this nib that has a little bit of a wet flow. You can really fill in all the spaces if you want to do like a full coverage um, with none of those hatch lines visible. This is just dark, dark green. Most of the time I like to have some of my pen marks visible. Gives it a sort of, um, I don't know, a friendly little quality to it. So yeah, this, uh, this is how the pen works. Feels pretty good. Here's Reverse, I can tell that's really scratchy. Um, all but the nicest of papers would tear under that. Forward there. Uh, reverse is definitely much thinner, but you have a, a definite limitation to how much you can do with this. It's not gonna do long lines. It's not doesn't have a very even flow and it's very scratchy. Um, Art advice, you guys said you liked that. So here's using this um, Wingsung 3008, some art advice. This is more all kinds of art, not just um, 
visual art and drawing. It reminds me of, uh, I used to do video editing and uh, I'm gonna just do a little sketch here while I tell this story. Um, I had two friends who were photographers and those photographers would give me photos that I would edit when I did video editing back in the day, drawing a little camera here. Their names were Fred and Ed, that's their real names. So without giving out too much, because I do still consider myself friends with these guys, one of them was, I always thought that person was a better photographer than the other, because he'd send me these amazing pictures. It was super easy and I used almost all of his pictures. And then the other one, I would use some of his pictures but there were a lot of pictures that he would not he'd give me that I just wouldn't think were that great. And I thought the, the issue was that one of them was a better photographer than the other. It turns out that one of them was just a better editor. So I'm not going to say who, but one of these two people, Fred and Ed, um, would give me maybe, they would shoot at an event and he would give me maybe 60 photos. And the <clears throat> other person would give me maybe 600 photos. And I found out later, having watched them work live at some of these events that um, I did videos for, they actually took about the same amount of photos each. Just one of them would give me everything he ever took. And the other one would give me um, just the stuff that he thought was good. And having you know a good creative eye himself, I, he felt that I would like the same things that he liked. And he was right, and I tended to think that he took a lot of great shots, which he did, but he also took a lot of mediocre ones, he just took them out. So when you edit yourself, you show off the best of your work as, a, as opposed to showing every single thing. Um, and this is true of, you know, when you're trying to sell yourself as an artist, uh, but also just even when people want to look at stuff that you've done when you're posting on social media. Um, Another way of putting this advice is you don't need to show everything. I have plenty of pages in this sketchbook and all my other sketchbooks that are super embarrassing. Maybe I'll show them to you sometime. Anyway, let's draw something big with this pen. Okay, so I've got a lot of stuff to talk to you guys about. Um, so I'm doing this longer video. You could see I had this idea of spelling out a word with some leaves and I'm gonna save the reveal to the very end so I'm really zoomed in uh, while I'm doing this, unless you follow me on Instagram, in which case you can just see the final result for yourself. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the pen first. So this 3008 is quite impressive for its price. And I feel like I have to add for its price because there's a couple of caveats that make it um, not, not the best, I'll say. Um, the fact that the nib is sometimes a little bit scratchy. It could be worked with if you've got some micro mesh and you don't mind playing around with your nibs. Um, I also noticed that as the ink level gets a little bit lower, um, say to the last, um, less than a milliliter of ink in there, uh, there's a little bit of inconsistency. The skipping that you saw in the drawing sample becomes a little bit more of a problem. And I think that also somewhat depends upon the ink. Um, but uh, that's there for you. It, you know, if you don't have the money for a Twisby Eco, this is a fair substitute. But if you're ever gonna have 30 bucks in your life, I gotta say um, that Eco is money well spent. If I could have only one pen, I'm not sure what I would choose, but the Eco would definitely be in my top three, top five. So uh, props to the Wingsung 3008 for going up against such a heavy hitter in the fountain pen community. It's pretty good. But at the same time, I definitely still would recommend an Eco over this uh, for issues of the finish and the smoothness of the nib um, and the consistency of the flow and the feed. And the feed of the uh, Twisby Eco is a, is a could deal thicker than the feed of this uh, Winsung 3008, so maybe that has something to do with it. Um, all right, and the other thing I wanted to tell you, and I think you might see me do it here, um, where I check the backside of the paper, is I 
think I'm sort of, I think my romance with uh, Tomoe River Paper is coming to an end. After doing this long piece that was a couple of hours, um, I found it frustrating that the paper just doesn't really feel like paper. Um, it feels like I'm writing on plastic. Uh, it takes a really long time to dry. I've mentioned before being a left-hander, that's kind of rough. I definitely smudged one of these letters um, and had to be very careful and take frequent breaks for the rest of the piece because of all of the uh, possibility of smudging that was happening here. Um, and it's, I mean, there, there's, if there's anything underneath the paper there you saw, I just flipped underneath because there was like a granule of something under there and it was making it impossible to draw over the top of it. It's sort of a princess and the pea situation, which is a bonkers fairy tale, by the way. Um, being, if, you know, if uh, being super sensitive about something really small and insignificant makes you a princess, then I suppose that I too am a princess. Um, something that you can quote me on. Uh, but so yeah, I'm still looking for a better paper for all of my stuff. Um, the search continues. And let me just use the last minute or so I have here to talk about some of the changes coming to my channel. Well, to be honest, most of the changes are just the fact that I changed my name. And the reason I changed my name is because I really wanted to build this sort of brand that encompasses all the stuff that I do, uh, some of the teaching supplementary materials that I create, um, the uh, work I do on Instagram and my Facebook page, and I actually have a website which will host um, some of my merchandising when I eventually get that stuff off the ground, the things that I've been building. So you can look out for that. Actually, you can go to my website right now and it's all under the same name, stepheninks.com, um, Instagram, Stephen Inks, uh, Facebook, Stephen Inks as well. It's all in one place where you can find everything. So if you're interested in connecting with me in more ways, um, even some of the personal stuff that I've shared, uh, I've wanted to do more of that and so I've been keeping a blog where you can go and read some of my more personal reflections on art and uh, this journey of life um, that I love sharing with you guys. Um, and that frees me up to keep this channel pretty much the same. We're gonna talk about fountain pen stuff, we're gonna talk about um, art, I'm gonna do drawing samples, and um, I really, really hope you guys continue to enjoy my content because I've really enjoyed with connecting with you all. Um, yeah, so that's all I wanted to explain. Uh, get ready for the reveal of my silly, silly, um, leafy drawing. We have looked at this Wingsung 3008 piston filler and compared it to the Twisby Eco and we've looked at um, the parts and features and we, we did a little art with it. I gotta say, there's a lot of really good things about this pen. I mean, the price being considered that you could get this pen for about a third to a quarter of the price of the Twisby Eco is kind of unique and interesting. I did notice some feedback 
a little bit of scratchiness to the nib, and um, some flow issues when the ink level gets really low. However, I think some of those things could be smoothed out working with the nib, which I have not done. Um, could make the nib a little bit smoother and have it run very similar in a similar manner to the Twisby Eco. One advantage and thing that I really like about it is that um, you can lift up the end of this blind cap and be able to adjust the level of the plunger here without um, having the, uh, the blind cap be lifted up, which is something that Twisby Eco does. So if you like to adjust your level um, of your piston fillers as the ink is running lower, this pen would be a great solution for you. Um, one thing that I'm thinking about when I look at this pen is how I used to have two categories of pens. When um, I was working and going to school, and currently uh, because of COVID, we've been teaching from home, but I had work pens and I had home pens. My more expensive pens I would not take to work just in case something happened to them uh, or they went missing. I believe that my Platinum Plaisir went missing in a similar manner at my work, um, at, at the school where I work. So I don't want to take a pen that's really expensive that I'm worried about losing. So in this case, this 3008 would make a great work pen edition of my Twisby Eco because the, the workings are very similar and the Eco is just slightly outside of the price range of where I would feel comfortable taking a pen to work and not worrying about if something were to happen to it. Um, and as it turns out, uh, COVID restrictions being lifted a little bit in my um, local community, we're actually going back to school next week. So by the time this video is posted, I'll be having live classes in a hybrid model with my students. And I may want to bring a lower cost pen with me as opposed to a more expensive one that I'd worry about losing. So um, this could be a good option for that. Do I feel the need to own both this and a Twisby Eco? I would say no. Um, and if I were to choose between the two, non considering the price, I would go with the Eco. I think the Eco is a fantastic pen. It's one of my favorite fountain pens and many people in the fountain pen community feel the same. So there's that to consider. But if you can't afford an Eco, this is actually a pretty cool substitute. And if you're like me where you have work pens and home pens, this is a great work pen, pretty solid. All right, so that's it for the video today. Please like and subscribe. I love the conversations we've been having. It's been really nice getting to know you all and learn things about you. Um, expect many great things from this channel in the future. I'm so excited for what we're gonna do as a community and all the great stuff that's going on. Um, I hope you're happy and healthy and well and uh, continue to take care of yourself. All right, have a great day, everybody.